Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Elaine and today we're going to do a summer solstice yoga practice. The summer solstice is the moment when the earth stops tilting toward the sun, takes a momentary pause and starts tilting away from the sun. So the effect is that our days start to become a little shorter and our nights become a little longer. So that's that day when everything's equal and then we start to go the other way. So we're going to infuse this practice with some pauses, more focus on the exhalation. Think of it as a moving meditation, so we're not going to be moving quickly. Really try to enjoy and feel each pose. And let's get started. So sitting with your legs crossed, sitting with your spine nice and long, we're gonna bring the hands together in Anjali Mudra. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, turn the back of your hands to connect and allow your hands to touch the ground. As you inhale, open your arms wide, like you're holding the earth in your hands. And then as you exhale, slowly come down. Take a pause after your exhalation and then inhale to expand. Long, slow exhalation, connecting your fingertips to the earth and waiting for that moment when the in-breath arrives. Let's do one more together, exhaling, bowing down. And inhaling, holding out. Now from here, I'd like you to turn your right palm to the floor, reach up and lean over to the right. And then sweep your arms across in front of you, land that left hand and reach the right arm up and over. Exhale a nice slow breath as you transition to the right. Inhale as you lift the elbow. Exhale slowly round and then arrive on your left side. One more time each side, thinking about that slow exhalation. Inhale, lifting the elbow and transition. Lovely. All right, bring yourself back up. We're going to take our left hand to our right knee, right hand behind us. Breathe in to lengthen the spine and then exhale, twist. So today's practice will take us into some core strengthening work. So the Ayurvedic symbol of summer is pitta. We leave the wet, sort of muddy kapha behind the rains of spring and we move into this warm arid time. So a little bit more heat and fire and some grounded back bends as well. So we're going to move onto our hands and knees. We're gonna tuck our toes underneath. We're gonna bring our hands together. We're gonna to open up and lean back. And as we exhale, we're gonna bring those hands down between our legs. Inhale, open up, feel the chest expand. And then exhale, long, slow breath down. And release. One more time. And release. Beautiful. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees now. We're going to do a little cat-cow movement. So with the feet flat, start to arch the back and gaze forward. And as you exhale, round your back and tuck your chin. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, round. One more time, fingers are spread nice and wide. And then arch. Now we're gonna tuck our toes under this time. Stay with this movement or join me for the next one. Inhale, arch the back, hips go rise up. And then lift the knees and rise into a very short downward dog. Inhale, land, gaze forward, shoulders back. Exhale, tuck the toes and rise. Do that two more times in your own time, really focusing on that long exhale, waiting for the pause, and then the inhale guides you back to the floor. Beautiful, this time let's stay up and stretch. And then maybe you want to move your heels up and down just see what feels good for you in this position. Maybe rolling from side to side on your feet. Just play and see what would feel good to your body right now. Nice. And then we're going to walk the feet in 
toward the center of the mat. And we're just going to bend the knees a little bit and let the arms drop. You could hold on to your opposite elbow with your opposite hand. You could sway from side to side. You could just push your hands into the earth. Just do what feels good for you. Let the head drop, feel the hips lift, and just work with that stretch in the back of your legs. Now, as you do this, maybe rock forward and back on the soles of your feet, rolling forward, rolling backward, just seeing how that is. Lovely. And then place your hands just below your knees. Extend your chest into a nice straight line, back nice and flat, lifting the kneecaps, and then exhale, bend. One more time, extend the chest, shoulders draw back, spine lengthens, and then fold. And this time as you come up, roll up one vertebrae at a time, slowly rising, letting your shoulders and then your head be the last thing to come up. And then turning to the center of your mat, we're gonna move into sort of a flowing circular movement. So reaching your right arm up towards the sky, start to lean over, and then as you go down, bend your knees and let that right hand sweep past your feet. And then the left hand takes the lead and it comes up and stretches. Exhale, lean to the right, lower down. Let that right hand take the lead as it lifts you up and lengthen. Exhale. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale. Inhale, right arm up. Last time. Exhale all the way down. Bend your knees as much as you need. And then slowly come up and release. Beautiful. Okay, let's come to the front of our mat. Standing with our feet hip distance apart. Bring your hands in front of your heart center into Anjali Mudra. And just feel that connection to the ground. Spread your toes. Feel rooted into the earth. Maybe you're outside like me surrounded by all the evidence of summer, blossom, flowers, birds. What is it that you want from this practice? How is this summer season going to be for you? What are you going to create? And then we're going to lift the arms up into the air, connect them overhead, and then bend your knees and slowly roll down towards the floor. Bring your hands to your shins, extend the spine straight, and then hands down, step back into a plank position. Good. And then drop your knees, your chest, and your chin, and land on the ground. Lift your chest into cobra, just a little bend of the elbows, and then push back into a child's pose and stretch. You can lengthen through your armpits, allow the hips to drop toward the heels, and maybe the forehead lands on the mat. Good. Come back up onto your hands and knees, tuck your toes and lift into a downward facing dog. All right, we're gonna lift the right leg into the air, lift it up as opening the hip or closing the hip, so toes down or out to the side. And then start to lift your left heel and draw that knee in towards your chest and then lower the knee to the floor. Exhale, lift the hips and knee up. Inhale, land. Stay with that long exhalation. And then slowly land. One more time, squeeze and lift. And this time, see if you can land that right foot underneath your right knee and drop your left knee to the floor. Come on up into Angia. Angie and Asana, low lunge. We're gonna bring the hands together. We're gonna turn the back of the hands to touch, lower the hands toward the floor as we exhale. And then inhale, open the arms again. So this familiar movement reminding us to really focus on those pauses in between the exhale and the inhale. Taking our time moving with grace and awareness. Last one, beautiful. From here, take your back hand to your hip, your front arm lifts up and lean over the side towards the bent leg side and just see how that feels. Beautiful. You might wanna lower your other hand toward the floor or keep your hand on your hip and slowly release. 
Okay, we're going to spin the back leg back and we're going to press into that left uh, foot. We're just going to lean into our hips. Make sure that your knee and your heel are in line with each other as you do that. And then we're going to place the left elbow on the left leg, reach up and stretch your right arm over your head and then sweep your hand to the other side of the mat and lengthen into a supported side Vashisthasana pose. Exhale, sweep back, elbow lands on knee, inhale, lift the elbow, exhale, inhale at the end. Feel the side of the body starting to release and open as we do these sort of half flowing movements from side to side. The next time your hand is on the floor, stay there and hold this position. If you want to add a little bit more pit to fire to the pose, you can lift the knee to connect to the elbow and lower. Exhaling, inhaling. Do what feels right for you. And maybe to finish, that back leg comes out and you reach up and you're in the supported pose. Push through the hand, lift the hips. Breathing in and out and then bring that leg back and return. So I'm gonna turn down to the floor. I'm going to press that front arm in and lift my back arm into a twist. So reach up towards the sky, push the heel away from you towards the back of the mat. Good. And then release the hand down, step the leg back into a plank position, lower knees, chest and chin or lie down completely flat. Roll yourself up into a cobra, push back onto your knees and into a child's pose. Take that pause, that moment to surrender the weight of your body down toward the earth. Breathing in, breathing out. And then slowly come back up onto your hands and knees, tuck your toes, peel your knees off and come back into your downward facing dog. From here, we're going to lift the left leg into the air and then lift the right heel slightly, draw the left knee in towards your chest and then let it land on the floor. Exhale, bring it up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Last time, hold it and then try to land that left foot below your left knee. Drop your back knee down and come on up. So we're on the other side. So taking your palms together, turn the back of your hands and bow down towards the earth. Inhale, open your palms and lean. So moving from this nice rounding flexion into this open heart extension. I hope you guys can hear all the birds that are singing around me. There's quite a few up here in the trees watching me as I do this. Exhale down. Last time. Beautiful. Here comes the wind. So hand on your hip, reach the back arm up and then lean over towards your bent knee side. Just gently encouraging this lateral flexion of your spine or reaching up towards the sky if that feels better. Good. And then we're going to turn around. We're going to bend into the other leg now. So you're facing the opposite way. Just starting to move in and out. Good. And then placing your elbow on that bent knee, reaching up over the top and then sweeping down along the grass. Hand down, reach up and lengthen from your fingers to your toes. Exhale, sweep the arm up and over. Long exhale. Inhale as you gaze up under your elbow. Last time sweeping over to the bent leg side. And then we're going to stay here on this side and either remain with the knee on the floor or bend the elbow and bring the knee to touch the elbow underneath you. Exhale as you do that. Inhale to return. Exhale. There we go, one more time. And if you wish, extend that leg out, 
reach the arm up and come into this one leg, one hand, and a little tripod foot out in front. Well done. Bring that leg back in. We're going to transition over, bring the back hand to the floor, and here we come into our twist. Knee down or knee up. See how you feel. Reaching up towards the sky as you push down through the back hand, and then slowly land. Step the front leg to the back, and this time we're going to come all the way to the floor. So lie down, extend your arms out in front of you like at 12 o'clock, flatten your feet, and bow your head towards the ground. Inhale, and exhale. Feel the earth receive the full weight of your body as you rest and wait. So we're gonna move into some extension exercises now. So exhale to prepare. As you inhale, bend your elbows, palms towards the floor, elbows draw in toward the side of the body. Exhale, arms extend out, head drops. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders back and away from the ears. Exhale, down. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, lower. One more time, squeeze. And if it feels okay, you could lift your feet now and extend your arms back into Shalabhasana. Maybe you interlace the fingers. Maybe you don't. Just see what feels right for you. Keep the eyes looking up, but keep the back of your neck long. We don't want to crush the vertebra in the back of the neck. Beautiful. And then release the hands and rest. Okay, we're just going to bend the knees and lift the feet up. We're just going to rock the legs from side to side. It's a nice little release for the lower back. Just let the feet and the lower legs windshield wipe from side to side. Okay, now bring your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes. Either zip everything up into a plank or come onto your knees and then rise into downward facing dog. All right, just see how it feels to be back here again. Take that moment, that pause to spread your fingers. Lift your hips and let your chest melt down towards your thighs. Put the weight into your left leg, lift your right leg up into the air. And then we're gonna draw that leg in toward the chest. Good. We're just gonna stay here and we're gonna hold for a moment. We're gonna pause and feel the knee lifting up for five, four. If that's too much, knee can be on the floor and just hold the knee like this. Three, two, one, land that foot. Beautiful. Now turn the back foot around so that it is parallel to the short end of the mat. I want you to really take your time here and make sure that the heel of your bent leg, if you drew a line, would go right through the middle of the arch of your back leg. Okay, once you're sure your feet are in the right position, bring yourself up. <laughs> there we go. And land in your warrior two. And then make a conscious effort to turn your palms up towards the sky. So thumbs go backwards. Beautiful. Okay, from here we're going to take that back arm, we're going to wrap it around, bring it towards the leg or the waist, wherever it will go. We're going to reach the front arm up. And then we're going to lean down over. So I'm reaching out past my leg. I'm going to touch my shin and I'm going to start to straighten that leg into a bound trikonasana, triangle pose. So as I hold my leg, I rotate my chest up and I drop my tailbone down. Really feel strong in your legs, so rooting to the earth, but allowing a gentle rotation of that top shoulder so that you have your shoulders and your hips in line. That's it, beautiful. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhale, and exhale. Lovely, slowly bring yourself back up. And we're gonna turn our feet so that the heels are in and the toes are out. We're gonna bend into goddess pose. We're gonna find some 
openness for our inner thighs as we press the knees away. Turn your fingers so they face to the back. Take a breath in to prepare. And as you exhale, roll your shoulder down towards the right and then sweep around and come over to the left. Drop down. So all of these sort of flowing half circle movements, mimicking the sun and the moon. Good, so just feeling your way into your hips as you round. All right, bring yourself back up. Now turn your feet so they're parallel to each other. Bring your hands to your hips, elbows go back. Take a nice long breath in. As you exhale, start to tilt from your hips down until you feel your hamstrings. And then just bring your hands. You might need blocks if the ground isn't there for you. Make sure that your heels are slightly more out than your toes. Good, and then we're just going to lower down towards the ground. So the hands can be on the floor if that's available. Draw the elbows in so they're parallel. Let the back of the neck lengthen and squeeze your heels towards each other. So you have some strength in your base, in your foundation, just letting all that blood rush down into the head, into the brain, as you invert your body, turning everything upside down. Start to slowly bring yourself back up. Put your right hand directly under your face. Take your left hand to your lower back and then twist and rotate around to the left. And then change your position, left hand down, right hand to back. Exhale, rotate to the right. Inhale, change the hand. Exhale, little twist of the upper back. Inhale, replace the hand. And exhale to the other side. Well done. Now, we're going to turn ourselves to the other side of the mat. So we're gonna to face to the right this time. We're gonna take that back leg back into a plank position. We're gonna lower down to the floor so you can either do a supported Ashtanga, yes, or you can come into Chaturanga, your choice. Tuck yourself back into a child pose. Just wait for that pause, that moment to reflect, to prepare to release for the next round. Coming up onto your hands and knees, tuck the toes and lift into downward facing dog. All right, so now we have the right foot on the floor, left leg lifts up into the air. We lift that right heel high and we draw the knee in toward the chest and we hold it there for five, four, three. Again, knee can be down like this, two, one, land that left foot, and then turn your left foot to face the short end of the mat. Make sure that you can see a line between your right heel and your left foot. Make sure the base is good, and then when you're ready, come on up into warrior two. Now make sure that when you turn your palms open, you gaze over your right knee, and you can see your big toe. You want to move the knee towards the baby toe side. Beautiful. Take that back arm, wrap it around your waist, and bring it in. Hold it there. Reach the hand up and stretch. And then lean all the way over to the side. Take a hold of your shin and start to lengthen your leg, coming into Trikonasana. Good. So you might have to be up higher. Maybe you're down lower. Just see. As you squeeze the heels towards each other, rotate the shoulder back. Just find that length in your spine. Take a breath in and a breath out. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful, bend that knee, slowly release the hand. Coming back into feet parallel to each other. Elbows go back. We're gonna fold forward one more time. This time hands touch the floor. Make sure that your toes are pointing in slightly. And this time we're going to take the right hand to the lower back and the left hand will reach for the outside of the right leg. And a gentle twist. 
So you're going to turn slightly towards your right leg, trying to gently draw your chest down and to the right. And then release. Take your right hand to your outside leg, left hand onto your lower back, your sacrum, and rotate. Inhale, relax. Exhale, find that rotation. Whatever's there for you today. There is no rush. We're just slowly finding our way into those tight places and using our breath to release and let go. One more time, switching over to the right. And then slowly back to the left, bending that right elbow as you gaze up towards the trees or the clouds. If you're lucky to be outside like me, beautiful. Bring yourself back up. We're going to turn back to the direction we were before. So over to the left. We're going to step that leg back and we're going to slowly lower all the way back down to the mat. We're going to flatten our feet and take our arms out in front, 12 o'clock and lower the head down. Feel yourself settle. Return to that gentle, easy flow of breath in and out. All right, we're going to go into a swimming motion now. So we're going to turn the back of the hands to face each other. As we inhale, we're going to sweep the arms back. And as we exhale, we're going to sweep them forward and land where we started. Inhale, sweep the arms back. And then exhale, bring them by the side and down. So it's like we're doing a big breast stroke. That's it. Good. One more time. Sweep and release. Last one. Sweep and release. Now bring your elbows in and place them underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers apart wide into Sphinx Pose. Feet are uh, flat on the floor. Take a breath in to prepare. And as you exhale, start to lift your abdominals up. Inhale, land. Exhale, squeeze and lift. Inhale, land. If you wanted to progress this into a plank, you could tuck your toes and lift up like this. And then land. We have two more to go. Exhale. Look back at your toes, creating that fire, that activation of the pitta element. Exhale. Lift. And slowly lower. Okay. We're going to pivot our hand to this side. We're going to come to lie onto our side. We're going to bend the bottom leg. Lots of little ants around here. And then I'm going to lift my hips up in the air, and I'm going to reach my arm up. Now, with the elbow under the shoulder, we're going to lift the leg and arm and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Now, another option for you might be to do this. So we're going to bend the knee and the elbow to connect to each other. So this is another option, working into those oblique muscles, that pit of fire activation of that summer energy ahead. Lovely. One more time. Exhale and release. Let's switch to the other side. So turning away from me, bending your bottom leg like a kickstand, pushing into your elbow and extended leg foot. Extend the arm and leg up and lower them down. Lift up and down. Beautiful. And if you wish, taking your hand behind your head, bend the elbow and knee to connect. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, curl. Last time. Well done. Roll back down onto your elbows and we're back where we started. We have one more extension to do. So we're going to bend our right leg and we're going to reach back with our hands to hold that foot. So draw the heel in toward the buttocks using your arms to press. Just feel the stretch maybe down the front of that leg. And then when you're ready, start to push the foot away and feel the stretch through the shoulders, through the front of the leg more. 
You might want to lift the other leg off the floor. I'm keeping mine flat on the floor. Even just lifting that leg a little bit, gazing forward, taking the spine into this lovely extension, working those back muscles. Good, and then release. Take your hand out in front and just roll onto your side. So make a little pillow with your arm for your head and just hold that foot and just feel that stretch into the front of your thigh. The foot is pushing away, the hand is holding it close, and the rest of your body is just resting on its side. Lovely, and release. Let's roll now, bending the left knee, reach both hands back for the left foot, drop the head down, and try to draw the heel closer to the buttocks, using both your hands, bending your elbows slightly. Exhale, let go. And then when you're ready, start to push the foot away. That just starts to lift you up away from the ground. Make sure that there's no tension, no pain, just this sense of being lifted away from the earth as you press that foot back. Beautiful. Little tiny breaths. It's not easy to breathe when you're pushing your tummy and your lungs into the ground and then sweeping your front arm out rolling onto your side so that top leg is in the air bent and then just press the foot away more giving a nice stretch to your shoulder front of your thigh rest your head completely return to your breath long slow exhalations waiting for that pause and then taking a lovely breath in. And then release the leg, bring your hands back down, tuck the toes under and either with your knees or into plank, rise into downward facing dog. All right, bend the knees a little bit more, lift the hips high, beautiful. And then we're gonna come down to sit so you can cross one leg in front of the other and then release, there we are. Good. We're going to take the feet and place them hip distance apart. We're going to turn the hands so that they're facing to the sides of the mat. And then we're going to lift the chest up and we're going to lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And if it feels okay to you to put weight into the feet and lift the hips up, go for that. And then release down and then lift and lower down. Okay, we're gonna take this into sort of a kind of a flowing movement. So putting weight into the front hand, I'm gonna put weight into the legs and I'm gonna reach my hand back and over as if I was going into Urdhva Dhanurasana and then I'm gonna come back down. I'm gonna take my other hand back, I'm gonna reach up and lift. So only do this if you're lifting your hips off the floor. If not, just keep your feet on the ground and just lift the chest and lower. So for some people, they might be able to reach back and land that head on the floor and come into this Urdhva Dhanurasana. That's not me. That's why I'm doing what I can today. It's a beautiful feeling just to lift. We'll do one more each side. I'm looking up through the trees. We had a lot of rain today and then it went away and left this beautiful blue sky with a few clouds and release. All right, so sitting back up nice and tall, extending the legs. I'd like to finish with a forward fold, but I want it to be very yin-like. So just allow the legs to extend forward. Take a nice breath in to prepare. And then as you exhale, tuck your chin and start to round your spine down over your legs. And just let the upper body slowly melt towards your legs, towards the earth. So we're not trying to reach for the toes. We're not trying to get our belly on our thighs. We're just letting the weight of our head hang. And we're using those nice long exhalations to protect our back. So little breath in, long breath out. Little breath in, long breath out, 
waiting for that pause and then filling yourself up and letting yourself go. Beautiful. And then slowly start to roll yourself up, bending your knees, sliding your hips down and coming down to lie on your back. We're just going to bring the knees into the chest, give them a little squeeze. And we're gonna do a happy baby pose. So take the knees out. I like to start with the soles of the feet together just to give a little bit of stretch to the groin, encouraging the knees out. Make sure that your tailbone is on the floor. Good. And then bending your elbows, just kind of drawing your feet a little closer to your groin. And then when you've done that, you can start to separate the feet so that the feet are directly over the knees. And just, if it feels nice to roll from side to side, do that. If the feet are not available, hold on to the shins just above the ankle and just feel that nice release of your groin. And then bring the legs together and slowly lower the feet to the floor. Pick up your hips and move them to the back of the mat a little bit. And then bend the knees toward the chest and lower them down towards me. So I'd like you to feel that the shoulders are on the earth. The knees are resting over to the side. You just give a little massage to your upper ribs, just encouraging that rotation of the upper back. And it's always nice. The body likes to be stroked or tapped. You can keep your eyes gazing up or you could turn your head towards your extended arm away from your knees. Just feeling this sensation of summer the warmth of the sun, the smell of the grass, the sound of the birds, and then start to lift the knees back up, place your feet back on the floor, and then pick up your hips, move them back to the center, and then a little bit over towards me. Then lift the feet, knees go away from me towards the back now, and then palm turns up on the arm extended, and then maybe you find in the other hand, just massaging, stroking the rib cage. Feeling the breath flowing in and out of your lungs. As you give yourself this final gentle twist. Lovely, start to bring the legs back and then place the feet on the floor. Bring the hips back to the center. And then when you're ready, roll onto your side and slowly bring yourself back up. We're gonna sit in a nice cross leg position. And we're gonna finish with some Shitali Pranayama. We'll start with khaki breath as a warm up, and then we'll move on from there. So take your finger as if it was a straw and place it between your lips, like you're holding onto the straw with your lips and then start to breathe in through that little hole. And then exhale through your nose. Inhale. And exhale. Now, if possible, you could stick your tongue slightly out, curl the edges of your tongue away from each other. And then exhale, release through the nose. Inhale. Exhale. So as you do this, what you're feeling is the coolness of the air on the surface of the tongue. Whether you're doing the straw or the curled tube tongue, doesn't matter. Inhaling. And exhale. And that should cool you down if you find yourself too hot. I often do it when I get a hot flush. Helps to cool my body temperature down right away. I'm just going to let my head drop over towards the left side. My right hand is on the earth, pressing down as I stretch. Good. 
and then help the head to come back up again and then drop the head over to the right extend the left hand like a tripod to the ground root down as you allow the head to drop take a hold of your chin bring your head back up and release so that is our summer sun salutation summer solstice practice i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you thought for those of you who are in the southern hemisphere it is going to be the winter um, solstice so i will do a separate video for that for you to enjoy and i hope to see you again sometime namaste